Hi, Sky Tuquati here, and today I have for you the Cram Daily Cram build that I have done of the real ACC X215 purple frame. Uh, finally put her together, as you can see. I do dig this color scheme. Purple is one of my favorite colors, but I think it came out fairly well. It came out decent. Um, there's some things I like about this and things I don't like about this build, and we'll go over everything that's inside of it right now. And a brief little threat out in the park that I did yesterday. Uh, visuals aren't that great because it was at night, so I started losing focus and did a bunch of crashes and still held up. Anyway, starting out with the frame, you can see that it's got those metal protection guards. And just what they protect, well, the way that I have everything crammed, really crammed here, it's not protecting any of my major components that I care about and that you would care about while you're flying, namely your VTX. Uh, you can literally destroy that if you have a crash over concrete and the camera. And you really can't jam it too far back because if you can see where that screw is, that's pretty much as far back as you can go. So component-wise, let's start out with, uh, we'll do the motors a little bit. Right now I'm using, yes, the 4-in-1 ESC's Real ACC 35 amps. It can fit in there, but man, talk about cramming things in. It does work well. Um, as you can see, I had to actually put everything. It's kind of sticks in the outside of it a little bit. It's not that bad. At least it's, I don't think it's that bad at, well, at all. But anyway, the way I was able to get that in there is because of the flight controller that I chose to use. I wanted to use an F4 flight controller. I wanted to use the Omnibus, but it's just a little bit too wide. And as some people notice too, look at how the cram dilly cram is. You have no space between your board and your ESC all-in-ones or your power distribution board if you were to have one down there. Literally, I had to choose the right combination for this, which happened to be this uh, Fortini F4 flight controller. And the reason I like it is because you can see by the shape how it's kind of like a diamond cutout, I guess, or a triangular cutout in the edges. You're able to fit a little more components in, and uh, yeah, the shape of it helps a lot. And the reason I really like this too is it has all the connections. It comes with good a good uh, PDF as well, but it has the connections for the, any four in one ESCs. It makes it really easy to connect it. All you have to do is connect your four motors, uh, the ground, and the battery to the battery connection side, and that's it. And you're good to go. It's uh, it's done deal. So I really like this board. It has 32 kilohertz on it. Gyros, I was I use it, but my pit pids right now really suck. So the flying is kind of it was a little bit too floaty for me. So I got to figure that out, adjust my pid rates, or come down from 32 down to probably eight kilohertz again. I guess whatever. Um, so let's see what else. That's the form when ESCs, the board, and Foxier Mini. Okay, I'm using a Foxier Mini on this. I thought because it's Foxier Mini that it's bigger than the micro, so it fit in here just right. Actually, no, it doesn't. I had to do some mods for that. I had to actually go to Thingiverse and print out some thicker pad side pads to get it to fit. And I also had to use a ton of uh, heat glue because it is the same size as Cadex, Cadex Mini. You know, you think a little bit bigger than the micro. But width-wise, if you could see where it actually fits down here, between there, there's a lot of room in, inside of that frame. So you actually had to print out some parts for it, uh, make it a little bit thicker, wider, so you can put some screws in, and like I said, choose your angle, your 40 degrees or 25 or 30 degrees, and hot glue the hell out of it and be happy with it because you're not going to be able to adjust it unless you uh, you know, remove that hot glue again. So that's that. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, the switchable transmitter. The reason I like this one because it already came with a low capacity filter, even though it looks like a common one, it really isn't. It has a low an LC filter on it, excuse me, so the video quality comes out really good. And I just have a ton of different type of uh, antennas that I'm experimenting with. Amways, uh, Imitation Pagodas, and uh, Firefly. Uh, let's see. Also, since I am, this is actually a 5S build, and I'm using, for motors, what comes off the Wizard uh, 220S they're 5S motors. It's 2206, 2300 kV. Thing works beautifully. 
with two bladed props. These are T5050s and it just takes off on 5S and it runs, I won't say cold, it runs warm to almost hot, not really when you're in motion. But uh, if you want to use three blades on this setup, forget about it. With this motor, I don't know if it's because these Ishin motors are maybe proprietary and only geared to work towards the uh, Ishin Wizard setup. But every single time that I have tried to hook it up on three inch props or three bladed props, doesn't matter what combination, 540s, uh, 550, 551s, 5051s, it doesn't matter. These motors literally burnt up. I mean, you could smell the motor burning. My windings are actually brown now, you can't see, but they went from a shiny copper down to brown. And every time I flew it, I would get an average from going from eight minutes you know, line of sight with these two bladed props down to one minute of flight time with this really bad so anyway yeah this setup works great with two bladed props but three bladed not happening and the batteries that i'm using i'm using the r-line 5s tattoo 95c along with the turnigy 1300 milliamp 65c both are great batteries in my opinion work awesome and man, I wish you were at the park when you could hear this sucker just taking off when I'm when I'm punching it, just doing a straight throttle punches. I mean, it, it was loud. The echo in around the park is loud. It's uh, and it's got a lot of juice, a lot of power with two blades. I wish that it did have the juice to do the actual three blade bladed props because on 5S this would be a monster. And I do have another one, another build. It's a 180 that is 5S, and it's running with the Racer Star 2305. Fire series and it can handle these three blades doesn't matter what blade I throw at it it can handle it but I made a boo-boo the other day and actually shorted out my 35 amp 4-in-1 ESCs and I have to order some more before I can actually show you how that one flies but anyway back to this one also I have the 1000 microfarad capacitor on the back get out any more any dirty uh, video is basically gone it's it's pretty clear oh and also this Fortini flyboard comes with grommets, so it's already soft mounted. The whole board's soft mounted. Along with, I've also soft mounted the uh, the motors as well. And yeah, it's only able to most of them only able to get three uh, three bolts in, but I also use the heat not the heat shrink, but Loctite, so they're pretty stable. They're locked in. Uh, also using the XSR, and for some reason receiver but some reason I had the last three that I've had have come with conformal coating which is great makes it waterproof but all of them I've had to update the firmware to make the telemetry work with the boards not cool I don't understand why you should have to do that you would think on the latest version that the latest firmware would be installed but no you've got to do it on your own so just a heads up you know some of your builds you may have to do that and what else oh conformal coating speaking of which I conformal coat all of my quads, all of them. Make them waterproof because you never know what situation you're gonna go into if you're flying in grass or dirt, it, this thing protects it. I do have a video of my old real ACC uh, X210. You can watch that video where I actually fly it with conformal coating in heavy rain, not that BS, freaking drops of water, heavy rain, and I landed in the puddles, puddles of water, kept it in for five seconds, and then took off with it. This stuff works. This stuff works, man. I mean, if you don't use this stuff, I recommend that you do. Anyway, oh, and another thing too, I use conformal coating because you know the carbon fiber, and it's just a, a test of mine right now. I don't know if it's 100%, but it seems to be working. But if you have long screws, you know, you're going to be sending arcs throughout the frame, and that motor is going to heat up because you're hitting the windings, and the windings hitting the frame, and all that good stuff. And then, yeah, you can blow out your motors that way too. So, what I've done is actually use conformal coating where the connections are, where I put the screws, and inside of the motor too on the windings. So I don't know if it's going to work. It seems like it's okay. Uh, we'll give it a shot and see what happens. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. This uh, video has gone longer than I wanted to. There will be a part two. You can just watch the, watch the uh, line of sight flying that I did in the park. Not nearly as great as RC Attic. Man, I wish someday to get those skills. But uh, you can see the power of 5S on this quad. And the durability, I mean, this sucker just it hit the ground hard a few times and got right back up and kept flying. Except for the last time, the last crash that I had, just ripped off the battery strap because these uh, etchings here 
where the battery strap goes. Doesn't matter. I filed them down and did all that good stuff. Doesn't matter what you do. If you're going to crash hard enough, it's going to rip your battery straps. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for now. Scotty Tuquati signing out. Hopefully you like this video and you like this build. And I do recommend it for those of you who want something that looks kind of clean. And yeah, that's it for now. All right, guys, take care. Like and subscribe. Talk to you later.